Hey, what's up guys? Kyle Watts here. Today we're going to check out the new Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Edition 2 Variable ND Filter. Let's go check it out. Hey, what's up guys? It's Kyle Watts here and today we're checking out the brand new Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Variable ND Signature Edition 2. This is a mouthful. So it comes in this eco-friendly packaging, uh, unlike the Edition 1 that came in kind of an artistic box that had Peter McKinnon's artwork and a uh, Peter McKinnon artwork lens cloth. Uh, this one is just an eco-friendly box. It kind of is just a very minimalistic box. So let's get right into it here. So it has a sleeve. You can toss that thing. You don't need it. And it comes in the... This little case here so let's get this thing opened up here and uh so this is the nd filter it comes in the 360 defender wait a minute hold on that is that's a hockey puck i mean peter mckinnon is canadian so i guess whatever uh okay let's try it again polar pro peter mckinnon edition 2 so we are opening that up and nope that's that's also that's makeup huh almost looks like an nd filter though well, anyways, all right, Polar Pro, Peter McKinnon, dang it. Nope, that's just a host of Sting Dong. That's not at all what I'm looking for. Okay, so here it is. The Polar Pro, Peter McKinnon, Edition 2 Variable ND Filter. Uh, in the box, you don't actually get a whole lot. Uh, you do get a card that just kind of explains the eco-friendly um, and it has a, like a lens cloth, which is a nice lens cloth. Uh, I do miss the fact that I wish this was, uh, you know, Banff National Park photo here, but, uh, you know, it's cool. It's still nice to have these either way. So that's really the packaging. You don't get much for that. Uh, kind of a letdown for me just cause it, you know, when you do have that first edition one and you've seen it and you get the second edition, you kind of expect better every time something new comes out. So it's a little bit of a letdown, you know, especially being that they're the same price. Um, but, you know, realistically, it's it's a box. It's probably something I'm going to put on my shelf, if that. Um, what's really important, obviously, is the actual product itself. So uh, it comes in this new case, which is called the Defender 360 case. Uh, it's similar in the way that they used to have this uh, gigantic kind of rubber um, lens cap that went on the first edition that would just cover the lens. But it would always leave the, the back exposed, so if you took it off, You'd have to put it in another kind of case, which they also had. You did get a case. In fact, I think you got two cases with the addition one. But now it's all just built into one. So you uh, you take off the back here. You just unscrew it from the lens. And you can see this is the inside of the lens. Uh, another cool thing too, real quick, Polar Pro, it seems like they put their kind of mirrored reflection on the inside of the lens, which is different than a lot of these other companies where they put that on the outside. But uh, anyways, you can take this, you flip this back around, and you can actually screw this onto the back side. Just kind of a uh, find the groove and it twists together. And now you can just put this right onto your lens here. Um, I did get a step up ring on my lens, by the way. This is a 77 millimeter. Uh, I always recommend getting the biggest you can um, for or at least the biggest lens you have. And then just use step up rings for all these lenses because you only want to buy one of these. You don't want to have to buy one for each size. You want to buy one and put them on all your lenses. So, in fact, I probably should have bought the 82, but I did buy the 77. Uh, maybe I actually might return this and see if I can switch to the 82, because I would recommend doing that. Uh, anyways, once you're done, you put this cap on. Um, you do have a hard case lens cap like that. You don't actually have to have this on. You can take that off if you want. But when you're done, you just peel off the lens cap and you are ready to go. Uh, you're shooting. You're good to go. And then this you can throw in your backpack, throw in your pocket. Um, but the cool thing with this is now you're not getting any fingerprints on the filter itself unless you're touching it. But you know, these things do still do to get dusty. So that's why it's nice to have this little dust cloth. Uh, and if you do get any fingerprints, the, the new thing about this ND filter is that it now has a new ring here that has different haptic feedbacks on each one of the stops. So when you actually get to the stop, you can kind of feel it click into place. You can move it on. So when you're up and you're trying to expose your shot, you're not really thinking about your ND filter. You can turn it and you can know when it stops. You know when it hits that 
that stops so you can, you know, that you're in the right spot for your settings. So uh, personally, I kind of like just exposing by eye. So I turn until I feel like I, it's at where I want it to. So to me, the haptic feedback is not a big deal. Um, the first edition did not have that. And that's kind of what I would like to do too, is just I turn it until I'm at the exposure. So I'm, I'm exposing by eye. Uh, anyways, the stops though, I will say one question that I had when I first bought this was, does the haptic stops create like a vibration or a shake when you turn it if you're on the go? Because, you know, sometimes people are we're running around, we're filming ourselves, and you just have to quick, you know, darken your shot because you just move from outdoors to indoors. Well, I will say there is a noticeable stop. Um, I do think you can actually turn the lens pretty soft, even with the stop. You can kind of keep it going. It's not, it's not super hard stop. It does have some fluidity to it. You might get a little shake, but you know, it's gonna be part of having this lens if it does create a little shake. Um, I, something I'm gonna have to test out a little bit more. But uh, one thing that I kind of wish they would have done is created these ridges that kind of have the grip for you turning. They are kind of small and there are some smooth parts. So it, it's if, unless you're grabbing it in the right spot, it's going to, your, your fingers are gonna kind of slip. So that's one thing that I did like about my other ND filters that it did kind of have teeth around the side. So no matter where you grabbed it, it would turn because you know when you're turning on the fly you're trying to keep your hand out of the frame so you're not touching the lens or getting your hand in the shot really so um, that is one thing that I wish they did do better was put some kind of more grip in the spots where they have the numbers one thing I really like about this lens so far that I've I've, I've only used it a couple times is that it does kind of have a warmer cast to it um, the ND filter that I was using before in fact the ND filter I was using before is this uh, KF concept um, one that you see on Amazon a lot. It's about like a $50, $60 ND filter. Um, I do like this one. I, I do think this was a very good choice for a lower budget because it's $60. It does have hard stops, so you can only go from two to five. And uh, this one, it had pretty much usable across the board. If you maxed it out, it did start getting some vignetting and it would get some splotchy parts in the sky. Uh, I'll, I'll show some footage here too of that. Uh, so it depends on where you are in this, you know, when you're, when you're using these ND filters, it depends where you are and compared to the sun. Uh, you want to be in that 90 degree angle from the sun for it to be more uniformed. Uh, when you start turning more, you'll start seeing some of the dark spots dip into the sky uh, or in the vignettes. Uh, but these ones were nice because you, you could turn them all the way. It's going to stop. You're not going to get that X pattern across the screen. But the one thing that I didn't like, as you can see this reflection has, it's got a green cast to it. And more importantly, this one did kind of lens flare. When you got lens flares, it would kind of go green. And I'm not really a big fan of that. I liked when you get more of a golden or a white sun flare. Uh, and some lenses, you can't help it. I know this uh, 18 to 105, you're gonna get a little bit, one of the lenses in here must have a little bit green tint to it too, because this thing still will get a slight green uh, lens flare. but um the, the filter definitely added to that so and that's uh one thing that was the downside to this thing is it did have a little bit more of a gray a little less saturation and it did have a tiny bit of a green cast in your highlights so um if you are looking for a cheaper option that's not 250 dollars for a peter mckinnon one i would say snag up one of these kf concept ones because they are a really nice option for lower budget in fact i used that for about two years so uh, moving forward though, I will be only using this one outdoors. So anything from here on up in my videos, you will be seeing this one on the camera, on my lenses. Uh, so on this new Peter McKinnon one, there is four additions to this lens. There are the normal variable ND filter, and then there's the variable ND filter plus mist, which is a kind of the first combo of a variable ND and a uh, kind of a cine, cine mist uh, filter on the, on the top, which creates kind of a dreamy uh, halations around your highlights kind of like it looks like you have mist around all your highlights and your lights which is kind of a cool look it's more cinematic and sometimes um, I don't really know how that works when you're out in like sunlight in the daytime shooting with these things it's something I kind of want to get in uh, try out on one of those uh, I'm gonna try to get one of those filters as well soon uh, but yeah the if you're looking for your first one, I would probably recommend just getting a two to five stop uh, ND filter. That's gonna be your basic one. You're gonna be shooting probably more in like F4 on up, out in sunlight. 
Uh, if you're trying to shoot 1428, somewhere in that bottom area, you're gonna wanna get a six to nine stop filter. It's just gonna be too much to try to push. Uh, and you know, even though you can go all the way up to five on these, when you max out ND filters, you're gonna start to get a little bit of vignetting in the corners or in the, in, in the, in the middle, you might see some, but it also kind of, it's gonna depend where you are facing in comparison to the sun. Um, these ones are probably the best out there I've ever seen that do not get, uh, they, they have a very even look across the sky. It's not real harsh vignetting. I think sometimes in the six to nine lens that you might get a little bit more vignetting, but uh, Polo Pro is definitely gonna be probably on the top of the game for vignetting. I think they guarantee on these zero vignetting down to 16 mil, um, which will be full frame, not not crop sensor. So, so if you already have the Peter McKinnon Edition 1 variable ND filter, is it worth upgrading to the Edition 2? Um, realistically, I would say probably not. It is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an expensive filter. I mean, this thing is a $250 filter and really one of the only things that kind of changed is it, it has those feedback stops so you can see what, you know, what, what stop you're in without having to actually look. But, uh, other than that, like, you know, they made a cosmetic change. They made it more of a shiny gold, kind of a brass gold, um, copper look, but, uh, the other one was kind of more of a, a matte satin finish which I kind of like the satin finish a little better than this one. Um, otherwise, it's it's pretty much the same filter as the other one. So if you already have this one, maybe get the like mist edition because that one is definitely different. Um, or if you need, you know, the six to nine, go ahead and get this one. It'll pair well with your old one. Um, if you're coming from, you know, a different filter like this KNF one, and if you want to spend the money for it, it's going to be an upgrade. For sure it's going to be an upgrade when you put a better piece of glass in front of your lens it's going to be an upgrade and something that costs fifty dollars on amazon from a company i've never heard of versus a actual filter company that makes high-end filters for lenses it's going to be not a comparison you're going to see better results with a filter like this if you upgrade um, and this thing you know this thing compares well even with filters that are twice its price above it so um, I will be testing this thing out some more in the future so we will come back to this thing and see if I'm still a fan of it but uh, until then yeah that's uh, that's my review here on the new Polar Pro Peter McKinnon Signature Edition 2 Variable ND Filter I really hope they shorten that name for Signature 3 but uh, well, let me know what you guys think of this thing go ahead and leave me a comment down below uh, are you guys looking to pick this thing up is it uh, something you already have and uh, if you guys have the Edition 2 Mist, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you guys like that. I will be trying to do a review shortly on that. All right, so if you guys have any questions, uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this thing. Uh, anything else you have a question on, I can try to answer it. While you're down there, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out any more gear reviews and tutorials coming up. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. But seriously, guys, is that not a hockey puck? Come on. It's a hockey puck. It looks like a hockey puck. Still pretty cool, though. There you guys. Let's go shoot.